It is Monday, April 22nd, 2013. This is Much Ado About Dota episode 19. And we are here as always with Dignitas, Aoi2000, Monolith, Liquid Bulba, and our special guest again back from Poland in the MS1 finals is Toby Wan. How are you doing, Toby? Are you tired? Bloody tired. Very, very tired. But the call came from Spitwad, and you know what? When that happens, you have to answer. That's true. Everyone responds to me. I don't know why. Um, well, let's get right into it. Big news from this week is the EMS finals, um, which, spoiler alert, Navi came out on top over Rock's Kiss in the finals. Um, tell us a little bit about the event. It's offline. Before... It's offline. It's offline. I don't, I don't see the stream. <laughs> Everything went offline, but really great intro, man. Loved it. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. A lot of energy in that <laughs> you, one. You, you should do it again sometime, like in about 30 seconds' time. Okay. I don't know. It says it's, all, it's live, but I don't know. Shit's like... Well, yeah, it just came back live again. I'm going to blame it on Twitch. Hello everyone and welcome to Much Ado About Dota, episode 19. It's April 22nd, 2013. And we are here with Aoi2000, Bulba, Monolith, and our special guest again, back from Poland, uh, is Toby Wan. How's it going, Toby? It's going well, man. It's going well. Tired, but still awake. Long day of travel from the EMS finals. And that's the news from this week, so we're going to get right into that. Uh, Navi defeated Rock's Kiss in the finals uh, with a 2-1 victory. Um, and before we get into any sort of drama, let's let's just hear what you thought about um, the event itself, Toby, since you were there and it was a pretty big event with prize pool of like $20,000 or so. Uh, luckily, a lot of people can now read an entire monologue I wrote about my thoughts on the event. Uh... <laughs> Just up over we're, and read it. we're still gonna ask you about it. Yeah, I, I thought I thought you would. I thought you would. I actually I actually enjoyed the event. Um, really going there, I wasn't expecting a hell of a lot, uh, which meant I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but no, I had a great time. Um, obviously, at the very very start, I was one of the one of the big ones complaining about the grid uh, with its heavy imbalance, especially when Virtus Pro also uh, lost passport from Illidan when he started two weeks ago. So then they were replaced by Rat in the Dark, which you kind of knew was going to be a one-sided stomp no matter how it was going to end up. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, we actually got the two top teams playing in the competition in the grand final. And that, that made it good enough for me. Roskis really deserved to be there. Navi deserved to be there. My fear was we'd have two teams in the final, which just didn't, like, one deserved to be there. And it wasn't the case. Yeah, um, and we did talk a little bit about the imbalance brackets last week, which are kind of a shame, but it gave Rock's Kiss a chance to shine. Um, so there's a silver lining to everything. Um, how was the how was the atmosphere of the event? There was kind of a small audience, from what I saw. Yeah, it was it was definitely like a, an up close and personal kind of thing. Like it, it's not that huge ass crowd with a big roar and the vibe in the room kind of thing of like oh my god epicness. Uh, Instead, it was just a whole bunch of people that really enjoyed Dota. Uh, spending some close personal time is what it felt like. It actually kind of felt more like a holiday uh, than an event for me. Uh, because I got to spend so much time with such awesome guys uh, from all the teams. I could spend a lot of time with the Fnatic boys, um, as well as going out for late night kebabs with uh, Navi. Finding a kebab in Poland at 2 a.m. in the morning, that's an adventure. Uh, and uh, then also people at the event, like there were some guys that, that they were there both days. They, like Everybody who was there on day one came back for day number two. They really enjoyed it. They loved talking with both like myself, Kawa, Zoe, Pyrian Flax, 
uh, all the players that were there as well. There was it was kind of like the the best meet and greet you could ask for, and there's uh, like some awesome Dota surrounding it. And uh, I guess I guess we can jump into the games. Sam, did you did you watch the uh, the stream? Um, yes, I, I watched. I watched VOD's first day, and then I, I watched the stream this, on Sunday. What did you think about Rock's Kiss, first of all? Um, they, they did have the easier side of the bracket, but uh, they AO was pretty decent before, so they, they kind of stomped them. And then they, uh, they well, who, who was the next team they played? DD, right? Or was DD into AO? Um, okay, yeah, and they stomped the other yeah. team as well, yeah. So they had a pretty relatively easy, but they had some good games and they showed uh, some aggressive play. So I like that. But I do feel if I was I was also disappointed with the way DD played. I actually think they should have done better. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, they, they they deserve to go to the finals from the top bracket. Okay. Any other teams who um, had any surprising performances? Mouse. Yeah, mouse. mouse beat Alliance. Mm-hmm. Two to one in the first round. Block yeah. went in saying that he was that they knew they were the underdog going in. They won. And so then they got O two'd by Navi. I think uh, Alliance sometimes I, I, I really question what they pick. And I know this happened before, um when they played versus uh Dignitas in that last Last week they played the the finals of the the Dignitas tour or whatever Dreamhack tour, and then they they just randomly like picked a Spectre in one of the games and they did the same, and when you pick a Spectre and the other team has Nakes and they're gonna go aggressive that Spectre is gonna they be actually useless. picked it into Nakes Lone Druid, yeah and they picked it into a Bush Strat and then he went and, Radiance, yeah so uh, as soon as this and th- and this game, the game versus Diga Mouse they picked Spectre into Fury on Nakes, and then I think it was Mag. And they were losing early game pretty, pretty badly, and the clockwork lost, uh, clockwork lost pretty badly to the Furion and mid is whatever, and then they lost their trailer. so that was pretty questionable. And then the first game, they won, I think. They, they, uh, Mao's won, right? They had the Alchemist. Yeah, that was kind of a weird game too. I feel Mao's played well, and then Alliance, they weren't playing at all like how they should. Yeah, how we it, felt at least. It was weird. They just traded farm with Alchemist, right? Yeah. But they didn't contest him at all. Yeah, the Alchemist got so damn fat. And they they never touched him. They never touched him. They thought they could they could go one on one farm farm on the safe lane against Alchemist. It's weird how something like that happens. Uh, like a team at the level of Alliance, like they clearly know how to deal with a hero like that. You just pressure him, but they just did it for some reason, and I guess they paid for it. They they just wanted to get the. Uh, the Furion and the the Gyro farm, and they wanted to win the mid game. At least that's what I think. Yeah. When Alchemist went to GD build, but he uh, he won like, and they had some good ganks and stuff, and they had some good fights. So that was basically that in that game. And then the second game, Alliance, they played really well. I think they did the Nakes Lone Druid, and then well, yeah, it was basically Bulldog's Bear that game. And I think that was it. Uh, and then well, who else played uh, well? I think who did Navi play? The first? Oh yeah, Fnatic played pretty disappointingly. That was a dis- that was a really disappointing series. Was was Oop, that? Uh... You're, you're typing poop shoot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Uh... I mean, what? was that just like Navi playing ridiculously well? When they, um, yeah. when they had the think, perfect game over... I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Because I think at this point in time... With you're, Dota, a, you're a robot. Yeah, Is he a robot for anybody else? Yeah. yeah, for me as well. Love the sky! Awesome. Alright. Okay, there we go. T- test it, Kurt. Hello? You're, yeah, you're good. Okay. Well, like at this point in time, like any of the top teams should be able to take off games from each other. So if you're if you have a two-zero stomp, it's not really one team just being a lot better. I think at this point, even though Navi did play really well, like I think Fnatic could have put up way better of a fight. What do you think Fnatic did wrong? Did you see their picks? Yeah, For their first game, they the, you when they they sent like what hero did they send versus the Lone Druid solo? 
Panda? Uh, panda? They, 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 they sent the well, panda, panda, or panda versus Soldier is not that bad. That's the thing. Well, he, he got kind of... I think it was early... No, he, until, had, he had evens, yes. Till level 5, but then Lone Druid yeah. just... You're going to crush the, the panda. But and then, the thing is, like, how is it supposed you, to work? Like, you pick panda, but you're giving, so like, but they're like they lost all their lanes if you think about it because they yeah, they but, lost. But that's that's not that. the panda's fault. Like the way the panda works is that he hits level five, but you can get level six, and then you're sh it's very easy for one support to rotate, and you can kill the lone druid with it. Yeah, the I understand the concept. I, I understand the concept, but they the the fact is they lost their lanes pretty badly. He gave farm. But it, it wasn't the panda farm. that did that. I'm I'm not gonna blame the panda, but I'm saying that they lost their lanes so badly, and th this was what happened. If they just try lane versus the bear, it would have been better. That's what I'm saying. Saying you're gonna give bear uh -huh. equal farm. But I mean. Like, you can't really sack. Like, the thing is, like, because they saw the Nyx pick, right? I think that's what they're thinking. Like, why do you want to give Nyx three levels? Because he's going to get a seven minute level six if you give him a free jungle on Radiant. Yeah. But, like, um. I, I don't think they could have dealt with that either. I think they had to aggress to try. They just had to play it better. And then, uh, one thing, uh, you don't, you never, sh you should never pick Tinker versus Nyx. I don't know what the hell that was. That Tinker is, uh, Nyx gets, like, completely hard counters everything about Tinker. Yeah. For all game, so that was I, it. Was pretty over in the picks, and then the second game it was the. Um, I don't know, it? but Dendi also had like four times no tail CS or something mid. Yeah, like it's actually like. Yeah, no tail got crushed. Yeah, and that shouldn't happen either because you can just march spam, go stack, and stuff like that, or just like laser rocket him and do find the lane right. Yeah, and, know, and, then, her. and then the second game, what was that? It was the. Um, the storm. That was right? the perfect game. The second yeah. game was a sixteen nil to nine. Yeah, that was that was just a crush. And they had like a line mid, I think. But oh, that was that was awful. Like what happened was like they smoke ganked two heroes, and then they sat mid for like a minute, and they got nothing accomplished. They didn't get a gank down. And when yeah. that happens, you just sort of lose. That's why I really hate two man smoke ganks early. Yeah. And then Navi kicked back. They had a three minute smoke gank. They pulled Nakes out of the jungle where he started, and they came in with Koro as well as Puppy. It was, yeah. It, it was really painful to actually watch that first smoke gank with just, and, and the fact Harney's smoke broke. That was actually one of the horrible things too. When he, when he came in with the gyro, he came just that little bit too close to Dendi and the smoke broke and revealed that gank. And they tried to look for it again. They attempted it, but it just, yeah. There was no opening. They couldn't find it. And then Na'Vi's opening was perfect. And then what was the next game? Was Na'Vi versus Maus? That was pretty much a stomp too. Yeah, I didn't actually watch that one. It will, the games were okay. I, I think they were just the first game was a PL game, and then but, but the Mouse picked PL and they lost. And then the second game was uh, the Storm Spirit with the Juggernaut Clinks game or something. And then the finals was Rock's Kiss versus Navi, and it was uh, <coughs> the first game was actually pretty interesting. I think it was um, Havos stacked the creep wave four times with the Silver it, it wasn't a boss. It was funny. It was oh, funny. Oh, yeah, funny. Okay, funny. They, 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 shared, they shared the control. I actually asked Puppy about this afterwards and uh, said, like, why the hell would you do that? Like, it's, like, moronic to do it. And the only answer he came back was, like, if you ask Funnick about it, he just says he did it and it just happened. <laughs> there was no logic well, to it. There was, there was no strat to say, let's force stack it and then just let the creep waves just overpower us. Um, it was just a mistake. If yeah. you can get multiple stacks off the creep wave, it's not bad depending on how you play it, though. But yeah, but when when you go how they played it was creep, completely they wrong. They didn't even but... have like they didn't have counter pushes that could deal with it. Well, no, it's it's not that. It's the fact that you have to drag it in between your towers, so you deny your creeps, and then you have mm. a effectively like four creeps denied on the hard carry. But I think they just like I actually didn't even watch the first game. There, but, there, like, there was the problem that they couldn't drag it. They just had uh, to push the tower, right? There, there wasn't shockwave. There was no shockwave up on the mag. So he couldn't just damage it from range. He had to come in close if he was going to try and pick him up. Yeah, so and then they got like was, two towers. Cool. Yeah, they, they took the tier one, took the tier two, and then like the, the four creep waves, it took them about two minutes, three minutes to clean it off, and they're doing it past their tier three tower. Yeah. And then well, that's just misplayed by them then. Like, yeah. like the concept isn't that bad though. It's just that you can't let them your their creep wave hit you from the front. You need to put it to the side through the tower so they can't. Like you can actually deny their carry a lot of exp if you can do that right. But normally you're not able to do that because it supports hitting your bear and stuff like that. Mm, what was the second game? Oh, that was the 
the Wiss CK right game. The Wiss CK game versus the PO. The the one game where they let the Wisp through. Yeah, and that was actually a pretty, pretty decent game. There was some good plays from Navi on that, and then PO just came through at the end. Yeah, now, there was some really weird decisions though, like that rotation from, from uh, from Roxkis. It was very unusual. They gave so much space to a Vorst, and what they tried to take in return was what, like a T1 tower on top lane? They, they moved the Enigma off the lane, and then after that point, a Vorst had all the space in the world. Yeah. When he was that shut was... down before that, he, he was getting dominated on that, on that long lane. Who, the, the PL was getting dominated? Yeah, the PL was being yeah, completely yeah. dominated by Dread. And then tried yeah. the left so they could push, and then, then he got all the space, and then came back. Dread came back, he was a level lower. Then, um, then a Vorst, a Lance flies out, and he's basically down a third of his life. It was, it Wait, was, was, was it a PL solo? It was yeah, PL solo P versus an offlane Enigma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Why would Navi do that? Because they thought their other lanes would work, which, yes. funny enough, they did. I mean, Poppy, Poppy and Kuro started to rotate around, but they wanted to try and run uh, across the tri lane on top with the Brewmaster, the Jakiro, and the Rubik. Which was actually very successful. And then the third game comes, and that was the Axe game, and that was just uh, <laughs> yeah. that was like the most anti-hype game. I was it like, was... finally a good game, and then boom, that happens. It, it was the worst aggressive try lane for the entire series. And then that's, that's saying something when you had the 16-0 against Fnatic. It, well, it, just, mean, uh... it made no sense, because he also went like Battle Hunger level 1. That was the, that was the problem. I think the, the try lane is not that bad. But he went battle longer level one. Yeah. And then that tri lane's Puppy, actually really, really strong. I feel it's actually decent versus PL. But then I, I seriously don't understand that. When you when you play Axe, you want to tank the early wave and then you want to harass them off and push it to the tower. Yeah. And then what they didn't at all. He just yeah. like battle hungering. Yeah, for, like, I saw no like that video of Puppy blocking and stuff like that, but that shouldn't have happened either, really. Yeah. And Navi had some good lanes that game. They they knew that Nakes would be safe lane, so they sent the TA versus the Nakes, and TA would does decent versus Nakes, and then Beastmaster versus Tinker is basically a wash. Well, the so, fact that TA, TA actually soloed Nakes as well, like there was yeah, not, yeah. Even, not even help required. It was yeah, yeah. So that was basically a stomp, and then it's basically it. So thoughts on EMS? Uh, Navi Navi back to form. They looked really good. So did Rock's Kiss. What did, uh... How many people are actually at the venue? Because, um... I know Larry had said in the Reddit post that, uh... That when they when the camera panned to show the audience, a lot of them are already left after the games to, to go into the hall and get some food yeah. and drink. We, um, we, had, we had about, uh, 40 chairs in the, uh, in the room itself. There really wasn't a space once you like had the space for the players, the huge owl screen that was in there, the commentators, the interview area. Um, there was a warm-up area as well for the players over on the side. So there's like 10 computers that the uh, teams we were playing next can go and warm up and practice with. And yeah, so there was like outside was co free coffee, tea, water, and like pastries and stuff. So when the game was over, people went outside and just ate and drank and then talked about the game. Do you think that the spectators had a good time? Yeah, the spectators had a great time. Um, most of them hung around after the matches, and they're like talking to all the players. They went downstairs to the bar for a drink with all the players as well. It was, as I think, as I said on my my little my little uh, Reddit thing, um, it was a very social. It was a very like intimate social kind of thing. It was a very mm -hmm. different different style of LAN, um, and it was never really planned to be that way. They did it because like the ESL Poland studio has no spectator area. So they, tried, they had to find a temporary place to, to run it so they could actually have at least some spectators. It wasn't a lot, but at least it had some spectators. It honestly felt like, um, this seeing everyone, it kind of felt like kind of, uh, I don't know if you can compare it, but the, the take TV thing or whatever? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Home Story Cut? Home, yeah. home Story. Home that story. would probably be the closest you could get to it. It did feel like that. That's At least that's what I got from the stream and... Like the pictures that people uploaded and stuff, it pretty, looked pretty chill. It looked like there were just more players than the actual people, but it didn't really matter because everyone was just like involving themselves with each other. So.
Did, most, uh, the, did... most of the people in the audience were actually the players as well. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they were all over it. We had a, an extra TV set up outside um, after Vallad actually got moved from the corridor. Because uh, people actually were sitting out there watching him. It was actually quite entertaining. Uh, he was also very, very loud. Um, he was actually coming through into the main hall area ju just from his voice from, in the, in, from the corridor. Uh, but they set a TV up outside so people could watch there as well. I like the fact that they had the uh, the ten extra computers from a for a warm up. That's yeah. really cool. I didn't know they had that. That's that's really cool. Uh, I think do most lands even do that? Not really. Yeah, no, not that not that I know. No, I didn't. That's not really e cool. Not even uh, the international had that. It's a pretty hard thing to do, right? That's a it's kind of a big investment for something that's not going to be used in the actual production of the event. Mm. But, but they did it. That's, that's one thing I was saying. Like the, the teams, I don't think you could find a single team that said, I hated the event. There wouldn't be a single team that did it. Like the hotel rooms were very, very comfortable. There was always food available. They gave you vouchers so you can go downstairs to the restaurant. And the restaurant was really, really nice food. And uh, you'd always have your breaks. Like the teams on the first day, you played one best of three, and that was it. On the last day, you played one best of three, and then maybe your grand final. And that was another best of three as well. So it, the, the schedule wasn't intense, and the teams were never really pressured. Uh, they just turned up, they did an interview beforehand, interview after, and everything else just seemed to flow. There was, it felt very like a very relaxed event that you could actually just sit down, play Dota, and focus on Dota. I mean, it's kind of nice to have events that are a little different like that, your big ones and then your more intimate events. Um, Actually, I remember that the old Chicago Fire and Ice one uh, that MYM flew in for Malik said that he really liked that it was a kind of a smaller event where you get to talk with all of the spectators and the other teams just because it's not huge. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about this Ghost of Gamers article? Yeah, does anyone else want to talk about this Ghost of Gamers article? <laughs> so, uh, all right, I'll no, no, you go, Spit. You go. Well, I mean, I was just... You started. Uh, you started. Yeah, you started, Spit. What is all yours, man? Well, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to, like, initiate the drama and then sit back and not talk. So, Ghost of Gamers, more specifically, Rain, wrote an article that apparently was kind of in a negative tone about the event, um, even though he wasn't there. And Toby responded via tweet. Um... And then you made a giant Reddit post, which I am not even done reading yet. Uh, but do you, I mean do you want to do you want to address some of the things that Ghost of Gamers had a problem with at the event, which obviously might not have been true since they weren't there. Well, if you guys want to address any of the points, and I'm happy to talk about them, but like I said, a hell of a lot in that thing, and it's it's not something you could easily just like go through obviously because I got to use two damn reddit posts to actually explain everything that I, I kind of felt. Um, right. There's one like, specific I, I, point that I want you to talk about which okay. I okay. want to want to go find your post so that I let, don't let, misquote let, let you. Let me say this one first man the reason right. for my tweet and everything else because um, I did it in like that final kind of statement kind of thing um, and it's something that just annoyed me a little bit and like Obviously, sometimes you, you, you kind of feel that sometimes you should just stay out of fights. That you shouldn't get involved. Uh, like, it's just not worth it. Only, like, oh, however many thousand people are going to read it. And then they'll probably consider that to be gospel. And, and that'll be it. And those thousand people will be misled. And sometimes you're just like, no, this really shouldn't be said or shouldn't really happen. Where you have a website like Ghost to Gamers, which is a very, very popular Dota 2 portal that a lot of people do read, and you have the head of news come on and do what is basically a blog post, but presented as an article. It's using the article system. They have a blog system, so if they want to say this is a blog, then they should have been using the blog system, not making an article for it, and then saying this is my opinion from however many miles away. So one advertising the fact that GGNet wasn't there, and then making all the assumptions that you would get from a regular live stream viewer that also, like, Rain's been involved in many LAN events. Like, he's, he's been in many, many LAN events. Um, two of them, in fact. I, three of them, four of them I was actually at that he was at. And he knows what happens behind the scenes, what happens at, at LAN events. And the assumptions he made is assumptions that I would expect from someone who didn't have any of that experience. 
And uh, for me, if someone of his experience has something like that, I really think it misleads people. And they'll be assuming things about EMS-1, which is 100% not correct. And I don't, I don't think EMS-1 really deserved that bad a press. Because they did, a, they did a, a really good job for their first time really making a crack at Dota 2. And considering the history of Dota 1, this event could have been absolutely horrible. Like it could have burnt in flames. Mm -hmm. It could have been really, really bad. Um, and it didn't. There were issues, like you always have at lands, but they worked through them as best they could. And I think they, they should be praised for the job they did. And of course, a lot of things to learn. But it was their first attempt at it. Some like Carl was his first land. Uh, some of the ESL management as well, like it was their first Dota two land they were part of. ESL Poland is only new, and now the guy is doing the productions. So yeah, there was there was a lot of it which I really thought was overly harsh and came from somebody in a position that shouldn't be making those kind of assumptions. I didn't feel it was it was right to let people just take it as gospel. Mm -hmm. And one of those assumptions, the one that really stuck out to me. Um, was he said a person of Velat status should not should not be treated with such little respect, something along the lines of that. And that's the yeah. kind of thing that you you can't really say that if you're not there because you're assuming something about how one person felt a lot. And if he felt good about the event, if he felt like he was getting what he deserved, then there's no reason to say anything like that. And um, mm -hmm. And you yourself said that he seemed fine. You know, the issue was that he was um, out streaming in a hallway or something? Or what, yeah. what was his setup? It, he was in the hallway? Uh, originally, he was in the hallway um, because there really wasn't a lot of space. There's actually a dermatology conference going on just around the corner. So there wasn't a hell of a lot of space. Uh, and, they, and he moved on day two. I don't know, um, like, I know where he moved. Uh, I don't know his reasons for moving. I think it might have been because some people were a little bit too loud behind him at the end of the day. Uh, but he was actually asked on day one if he wanted to move. And he said, no, I like having people around me. I like being out here uh, with, with everybody else. And he had like all of Na'Vi or Rock's Kiss grouped up around him watching him broadcast uh, from his screen. So, yeah, there was, there was, he enjoyed it there. He enjoyed it there. And the fact that Did ESL asked nothing of him, in fact, they gave him a computer, a space to cast, an internet line to do so, and he used his own live stream, kept all of his own revenue, and it was his choice to be there. Mm -hmm. he did, they didn't plan for him, right? It was um, sort of like, Originally, uh, no. No, he, he, yeah. he, just, he basically asked for a contact for ESL and was given one. And they were just and like, okay, yeah, sure, come down. Basically. Yeah, well, well if, if you, he, he basically said, I want to cast from the event. I don't, I don't care how I do it. I just want to be at the event to cast. And they said, okay, we'll give you a table. We'll give you a computer uh, and an internet connection. Um, the rest is up to you. Because that was basically what he couldn't carry on a plane. Well, I mean, it seemed like they did a pretty good job dealing with um, the hiccups they ran into for the most part. And everyone I've heard from who was at the event um, was relatively happy with it, so uh, I think I think we can move on here, unless anyone else wants to say anything else about EMS. All right, um, I have I have something. All right, Sam. Of course you do. The highlight of the event, the host. I, I gotta say, highlight of the event. That's right. A, a, uni um, uh, a uniform decision, I think. You mean oh, yeah. a uniform opinion? <laughs> uh, whatever, dude. I'm tired. Uniform opinion. You want to expand on that? What? I'm just no, saying. Would you, it would was you like, like to? <laughs> okay, when you're, you know, you're you're playing. I mean, um, you're in a dark alley, and suddenly out oh, of nowhere, a, a light, an angel pops out of of, of the heavens. And that that was it. All right. Are you, are you comparing the EMS land to a dark alley? Yeah, I thought that was going to oh, okay. go in a much different direction when you started that. Whatever, dude. I had to come up with something. It's a long day. I haven't slept. Well, right. oh, I just wanted to say something about EMS. Like For their first try at a Dota event, that's actually, I thought it was pretty good. If you look at, like say, NASL, when they first did their thing, it was completely awful. And I think NASL has by far the best production of any North American StarCraft 2 tournament now. So give them some room, give them some time, and 
maybe they'll be able to put on something really, really good. Because they're confirmed for four, uh, three more LAN events, right? Which yep. is potential more in the future. So like, yeah. next, next one I they need start, some room, like for a first time. for a first attempt. Like, just hearing about the fact that players had computers to practice on is really amazing to me. Because that's something that I don't know, but like at tournaments, that's something that. The first game is thing. always so hard. It's it's so hard to play that first game, especially when you have to like fix your sleep schedule, jet lag, and everything like that. You have to get used to the settings, and mm. the computers and the crowd or whatever. It's just so nice to have that. Yeah. So they, they it actually, looks like they they're really doing the right thing. another steps too, because they had another set of computers on the stage. Uh, if you actually look at the pictures of the stage, and you'll see like two boxes underneath every like underneath every monitor. They actually had two computers set up, so you'd actually come up. So like international move the hard drives in and out. Um, you could actually set up two teams beforehand, so all the other team would have to do was basically come up, pull the keyboards, put them on the table, and then just play away, because they already set up a secondary computer for each spot. That's impressive. Mm. I mean, yeah, most, I that, that's, that's, honestly, that's pretty good foresight. I mean, you don't really, those are things that are lost on the camera, but that's, that's impressive. Yeah. And I, I, honestly, they got, a, they got a lot more numbers than I thought they would. 100k plus? Did you really expect them to have that much less? I mean, it was a pretty big LAN event, prize pool wise. I don't know. I, I, I could have seen it going either way, especially with how much criticism they were getting going into the LAN. Like, oh, the bracket sucks. Um, at at, at the end of the day, man, you, you, had, you had good teams, you had a decent prize pool, you had Dota 2, and yeah, I, they, they didn't get, like, oh my god, blow your, blow your brain mind, like, viewers. They got the same as what the Star Ladder Finals got, and that was without Navi. So it could have been bigger, but I think it was still it was it should have been as predicted as predicted. I mean, I I think that just speaks to how much the game is growing, how much viewership is really growing for mm. for this game. I mean, before 100k was almost unheard of. Yeah, yeah. They also did a really good job having streams in a bunch of languages. I saw a big list of all of their streams. Um, and even though some of them didn't have that many viewers, I think that's really nice. All right, let's move on to DreamHack. DreamHack announced their uh, their LAN event after the uh, DreamHack Invitational ended. Um, and we do need to talk about that, too. The finals was Alliance versus Dignitas, which was a pretty incredible finals. Um, Kurt, do you want to talk any about your your base race game to end the tournament. Like, uh, Snake King should have TP back Panda ult. Like, this isn't flame either. Like, we're just identifying mistakes here, right? Mm -hmm. Snake King should have TP back ult. Fog should have dropped wards and then TP back, just slowed them down. Meg and Lashrat could have stayed in our base and hit our tree, and we would have lost that base race. So, all the people on Twitter are like, oh my god, S4 and Aki stunning. It's really good. It didn't really matter, although it was quite good that they hit those stuns. But really, that was our game to lose, and we were so far ahead in that game. We had a Reaper guy. There's no way we should have lost that. But yeah, shit happens, huh? And we'll learn from it. How did you let it get to the base race to begin with? Well, the base race was fine. That was a free win for us. It's just what happened during. I mean, yeah, like you said, like, the base race was the proper decision. We just messed okay. up after. Okay. The, the panda should TP back and cycle on the the bear, and we would have won. One cycle on the bear, we would have won the game. So, yeah, when he when he ulted to kill, like the as soon as so. as soon as panda ulted in our base, we all just gave <laughs> up. Like honestly, we all actually just gave up at that point. Dude, wait too sexy. I, I don't know. I didn't even BKB. I was just like, no, screw this. And I don't know. I just right clicked. Mm. I mean, that's something that'll never happen again, though. I mean, it's so vivid and such a big thing. It's never gonna happen again. So you sure about there's, that? There's that silver no, lining. I'm yeah, not, I'm sure. Actually. You're not? No. No? Stuff happens. You don't think? Yeah, well, I mean, happens. stuff happens, but... Like, I think... we're going to lose a base race at some point because we make a mistake. It's it's a very high-pressure situation with very low time to react. Stuff will happen. Stuff will also happen on our team in our favor. Like, it's a base race. It's high pressure. I think but it'd I think... be really, 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 really advised to just be like, that would never happen again. We're never going to make that mistake. Okay, like, that's, it's so that's easy not for Snake King I... just hit R on Panda in their base. That's not what I meant, but... Yeah, that's not well, what I meant. It'll be but... more painful well, next time, maybe. Well, I mean, like, what did you mean then? That something like, like, 
just I don't want to say too much about what happened, what we talked about in the Skype call. Um, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is it's something that we're definitely going to learn from. And I'll leave it at that. I was in that Skype call. I actually don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well, that's because I'm not saying what I'm talking about. But anyways, sure. we'll, we'll leave the TLDR. To, it's something that we'll learn from. Making rash decisions. Cute. And you and Alliance will be heading to the event in the middle of June, correct? Yep. Yeah. Should be a good time. Um, party time, that... people's party time, Sweden style. <laughs> exactly with the GD Studio. They party It'll hard. Be fun. Yeah. They, they, they party hard, so, and then all the then all the clubs shut down at two a.m. in the morning in Sweden, no matter what. Was it a one? Uh, it's, it's two a.m. But basically, if you try and leave the event at like one a.m. in the morning, you'll get into the city center, and everything will not let you in. So what do you do time. then? Uh, normally, there's a couple of guys who are really smart, and they bring like a whole crap ton of alcohol, and we go to the uh, hotel just across the road from the uh, from DreamHack, so into the into Almia. It's a good plan. Who who will be the um, host at DreamHack? Just uh, just wondering. No idea. No the idea. really it, seems to like pure of lax guys. I'm telling you, dude. The light. The light was the head. Are you, attract, are you attracted to bald men, Bulba? Yes, I, I'm attracted to Draskal. What a Walter White. You see that the Dodo couples? That's the funniest thing ever. So, so what, what are you going to do you if, if you have like Draskal as well as Piri and Flax like, in Come the on. same room? Anyway, you don't, just like, don't start rubbing in. the heads or something? It's pretty funny. I saw this like poll before. It was linked on my stream and you were winning that one by like 75%. I'm like, losing right people. now to PyCat and Mirror. Yeah, I, I'm I'm, ch I'm checking it out. I can't mirror. I can't mirror. It's gonna it's gonna win. It's a 79 vote. Dude, mine isn't even original, dude. Like, where does that even come from, Bulba Hand? There's no it's, correlation. It's so there. fitting. Where, where, where does it come from, man? You put the two together, and you've already got where it comes from. Whatever. <laughs> Someone want to put the link in chat for that? Since I cannot find I'm it sure. anymore. I'm sure. Uh, I'll throw I'll throw it in there. All right, there you go. I'm guessing we're still in delay, though. So yeah, we are. We are. Was it two minute delay? Yeah. I'll put it back in one minute. I don't know why there is a delay because it reads zero on Twitch, but there is a delay. Um, let's move on to the We Play tournament. There is a big match, EG versus Liquid this week. Um. What's actually happening in the tournament, though? Dignitas and Kaipi made it through, and EG and Liquid made it through. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Clairvoyance's casting with LD in the EG versus Liquid match. Um, Clairvoyance got flamed a little bit for his casting, although a lot of people really liked it. Um, Charlie, do you want to do you want to start out with any thoughts about that? Uh, I mean, Claire, Claire's Claire's cast. Uh, I mean, a lot of people said he flamed and that he was, and it it detracted from uh, from I guess the the enjoyment of of the cast, but at the same time. At the same time, he did get a lot of support for being really real about it, for not being afraid to criticize players. Mm -hmm. um, and in his defense, he, I guess he does have the standing to do that. I mean, he, for the most part, does like he? everything he said is, is I, right. I disagree with that. <clears throat> yeah, okay, I, don't think, well, I don't think he has the standing to do that. Like, I don't think okay, maybe not the... and I think he made a couple of mistakes in the cast and if a you're couple, being that critical okay, but, you can't make mistakes like that because okay. like, if you say something like what is a player doing with their life you better damn be right and that doesn't add anything to your cast like that really doesn't you can say hey here's how you made a mistake here's how you could have fixed it but what's a player doing with his life like why 
That's and like, like I, I actually didn't like. I, 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 like honestly, I think that's more well, like. I thought that was awful. It, from from his perspective, him saying that is more phrasage than than actual. But I that's, mean, dude, he's that's presenting how he himself to an audience. Like, no, yeah, that's that's a, that's like, how he talks. Is, no, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not defending. Like, I'm well, not saying that's that that it's okay for him to say say that. But from his point of view, he for him that was phrasage. It was not meant to be like demeaning I mean, or well, he's he's trying to put himself as a caster to like a global audience and don't get me wrong like i like his casting in most of the games like before this like i listened to a couple of his casts for liquid eg i really didn't like it but most of the cast i like it but like if you're presenting I mean, yourself to an audience like that then it's upon you like it's the onus is on you really to, to like it is it is it, i mean it's it, like i mean what i'm saying is that it's different like at the same time a lot of people did like that i mean your taste might not exactly be theirs a lot of people did like the fact that he was highly critical maybe not everything he said but the was thing is you don't need to be point. critical by saying hey this player is awful you can be, say hey this i don't is think he this said this player is awful. he said what hey, are hey, 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 well, well, we went that, over that we went over that that well that the thing, thing is like, like if not... that's what he said like you can't just say hey i'm contextualizing it for myself because this is how i see how how what i say if you're saying something like that to an I'm audience not... it's contextualized for everyone else like oh, i'm like, not just a... you have to just say that it was a mistake by him to say that you can't just say it was excusable to say something like that like all right, all right, all right. we have clairvoyance like, in the call it's... with us now oh sweet i'm on sam it. sam brought him in I don't know why. I got a fiend this, bro. I got a fiend this. Let's go. Yo, yo, this is this is actually about to go down right now, yo. Oh yeah. First of all, real talk. Wait, 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 wait. Well, before you do it, do you have anything to say? Like, is this gonna be a title for your monologue? Can there bro, be a straight up? Like, no, no. Guys, in five years, when we when we go back to this day, shut wanna... your mouth, yo. Know your damn rule and shut your damn mouth, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to seriously go in. Let me tell you straight up, all right. First of all, thank you guys for having me. You know. Just, I really didn't expect you to actually invite me in the middle of the show. I we really didn't do. invite you. But go ahead. <laughs> go. I'm sorry. Go. Next thing. Next thing. <coughs> uh, if it's had, if it has been spread along, that's fine. If not, I actually wanted to talk to you more on a personal level, spitwad. So allow me to just introduce to my myself. We've known each other for years, you know, clairvoyance. My name is Aaron, also, and I'm assuming your name is Aaron, right? Spit. Is that correct? That's a correct assumption. Okay. Knowing that it's a good assumption, I'm glad. I'd like to actually just refer to your polls personally. I really want to break this down. I'm just, um, just before we go on, I'm going to just give a little bit of a disclaimer. This is coming from my point of view. Of course, what I do say is personal. At the same time, this is the straw that broke the camel's back for me, and I want to break it down, and I want to make the statement. Okay. So um, do you want me to read my post out loud yeah, first? Hey, or I you want to hear go. the connotation. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got to find it really quick. I got a lockdown for you, homie. Page seven, post like halfway down. Don't worry. Oh, my pages are different, dude. I, I browse on a Dota way faster than that. Oh, dear. I'll find it, though. Um, all right. We all flame, but it's your job as a caster to make the game more enjoyable for viewers. You didn't do that not because you were incorrect, but because you constantly put the players down. Your viewers are fans of these players. We're rooting for them, and you're fighting against us. Stop Focus right, on there. right there. That's fine. All right. I reiterate on these points. All right, give me a couple of moments if you don't mind, please, and thanks. So first of all, we all claim it's your job as a caster to make the game more enjoyable for your viewers. Yes, as a matter of fact, this is actually the only point I'm going to agree on with your whole segment here. And this is the only point on that I'm going to agree with every single other individual who has either critiqued feedback or positively commented on my feedback, um, about my casting, rather. Just before I came on, Kurt was actually going into discussion about saying, um, yeah, you know, if if you have points, you can't be stupid about it. If these players make these kind of mistakes, you don't just go on and say you're awful and stuff like that. And he's absolutely correct. Just like what he, what he said about the GMAX scenario. In those kind of high-pressure situations, which you have to recognize as high-pressured, unexpected scenarios with unexpected outcome situations, you cannot possibly predict this as a human being. It's just humanly impossible for you to say, 23 minutes into the game, we have a rapier, we're going to go base race. No, it just does not happen. It was a losing game even if you are going to win the base race just because the sole fact of the decision was in favor of their end. Like at the, at the end of the day, that's what it came down to. And you lost in your own game, which is why you say you lost. Which is why I agree with you 100%. Secondly, what you say is true also with regards to saying like players are awful and stuff like that. But I have a, I have a real honest question. Did, how many people actually watched the cast here? I, I, ca I, ca I watched of it. the replay. I went over actually. 
Because like, I, I wanted to see what many, all the criticism people, was about. Okay, how many and Kurt, do you, just before the, I go on, um, sorry, Charlie. Kurt, do you actually think that all I did during the whole cast was flame players? Is that is that no, what? But I think that when you're being that critical, like stuff like telling, saying that Demon getting four staff is going to lose them the game or potentially, I actually thought that was the correct decision there. And he, there are three times where he got kills, he wouldn't have gone with blink because of mana usage. And you could have had like a really good talk about how four staff could have been better for a myriad of reasons. Like there are actually very good reasons to get four staff that game. He didn't need to split up push out the other lanes because they had a fury on. He didn't need to blink into those trees. He didn't have the mana to use it. If you go blink into hex, you don't really have the mana to sustain against their team. And then you were like, you actually harped on that for a long time, and I thought that was a mistake. But don't get me wrong. Like I'm not, like I'm saying this like. No, I'm no, no, don't worry. Like, I never take yeah, these okay. things personally or as a flame. Kurt, I respect that. I agree with the points that you said. There there may have been times that the four staff saved and not, but there are also times you have to recognize that, for example, a player like Demon, I could tell when I was watching him that he wasn't playing Tinker all the time because he was not being efficient with his soul ring usage. He was not using his bottle in between his rearm cast, and stuff like this really do make game impact. And yes, he has the profit on his team as opposed to being on and the other team, in which case, blinking into trees would have been even a better decision, especially when you're facing up melee core heroes who can't reach you. Entirely because, one, they don't have vision. Two, you force Night Stalker into buying an Agadim. That hero becomes useless in the team fights unless he catches somebody off guard. And three, what's the point of getting a four staff against a Night Stalker in the middle of a team fight, really? Why not just blink into the trees, guarantee yourself the safety of spamming March, which is what your hero is good for? But really, essentially, I respect the decision, I respect the points, and you made some valid points, I agree with it. Let's move on. What I really want to talk about then is this. I'm a, we were talking about the viewers. The viewers are fans of these players. We're rooting for them. You're fighting against us. Spit, this line that you say, it sounds really, really cool on paper. As a matter of fact, I think you're a hero just, before, just because you said it. But I really want to ask you, between the two of us, who do you think cares more about these teams as a whole, these North American teams? I personally made an agenda to call out that the Chinese are not going to win TI3 this year. What about you? Would you be able to make such a bold call for the sake of your North American professional players? Yes. You would? Yes. Wait, okay. you're making a prediction just to hype Wait. something? Or right. so, you you, so basically, you are a fan of these players. And essentially, with this statement... <laughs> what do you expect me to say to that, though? You're dividing me. What? Well, wait, clear I, wait, 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 I want, I want to stop you for a second here. Are, are you saying that Spitwad does not care enough about NA Dota? No, what I'm saying is this. As a person who is the flagship, the leader, you, Spitwa, look, you are the person that is basically in charge of all the brute stars, all the grand <laughs> all the Spitwads. No, let me tell you straight up. Yo, this is hilarious, but it's true. Yo, if NADOTA.com did not exist, do you think any of these figures would have existed the way they do today? No. No, that's right. It's a very simple question. The next question I ask you, when you make a statement like this, you're distinctly dividing me from these fans who actually care about this to the people like like total dicks who just don't care about the game and think they're on their high horse and better than everybody else. And the fact of the matter is, these players are in, in these games for a reason. I mean, as much as I wanted to be a player, I couldn't make it big. And I couldn't get the job done when it was possible. At the end of the day, I'm being criticized and isolated as a target that's, that's entirely opposite of what I want to do because, frankly, let me tell you, I care a whole damn lot about Dignitas and I want them to win the big one. But just as much, I want Sam and I want the rest of Liquid to big, win the big one because they went on a huge streak. I'm very happy for my American brethren as well as the fact that these guys are really, really close contacts of mine. And all of a sudden, once again, why, why am I being the opposed one here? But you know, it's interesting Dude, that, let, me, let me give you a my at the end of the day before, before we let Toby talk here. It, it doesn't matter what I think. This comes down to appearances and professionalism. And if we want esports and NA Dota to be taken seriously, I think that it's my job and everyone else's job to show just an undivided support for the teams, <laughs> that is funny. for the tournaments. That's fantastic. I'm so glad you brought up that point. Spitwad, what is NA Dota really known for? Every time something out of line gets posted on the, on the threads, what do you say? There's this copy and paste that you do every single time, and I'm going to call you out on it. What do you say? You tell me what it is. I'll tell you what it is, but you really have no idea. Is that what's going on? Every mm. single time something out of line po gets posted, whether it's ridiculous blame on a different level or pictures of other people's naked photos getting photoshopped. All right, so we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the censorship thing? Yeah, that's right. All right. Let me ask you, yo, 
Aaron, if straight up, if I ask. delete something from NA Dota, you know it's just gonna be posted somewhere else. So what's the point? Is is that at the at the end of the day? Is that is that just I, the? What's the point of deleting anything? I've had cease and desist letters emailed to me, and I just ignore them. Why why does it matter? Why wouldn't I just leave things up? So it is a no censorship clause, correct? Sure. Hey, so wait, wait, can I ask for something? Because I'm I'm actually really confused and lost right now. Could could you summarize what your argument, Clarice, in like thirty seconds for me? Because I, I don't yeah. I actually lost what you're talking ten, about. Ten, so, ten seconds, not sorry, sorry, I ten. Need to the, I need to bring it to the picture. So I'm gonna say this: casters as a whole are not always going to sugarcoat the real deal. Unfortunately, the reality is, when I see some of these games, when I see some decisions being made, and I don't agree with it, I'll call it out, whether it's right or wrong, because sometimes it's just, it's just not right. Yo, Kurt, let me ask you a straight-up question. If you're playing Void, and you miss three Chronospheres in a game, in a match, professional match, where there's a lot in the stake, because let me tell you, EG versus Liquid, that that's got a lot on the line, and you know it's it's so all much. Right, all right, let's let's wrap this okay, up. Okay, clairvoyance. Okay, I know what you're saying, right? You're saying, hey, I don't want to sugarcoat it, but what we're saying is, you like, there's a difference between sugarcoating something, like, oh no, that's okay, it wasn't that big of a deal, right? That's sugarcoating, and just saying, here's a mistake, here's how he should have chronoed, and then you explain it to the viewers. I think that gives you a better cast instead of saying, what is this guy doing with your life, which actually doesn't add anything to the cast. You're absolutely right, but that's that one. See, that one I have to agree, but that was more for an entertaining factor, and I feel like it's just it's just my nature to kind of just say that kind of stuff. So you know, honestly, if it offended people, I apologize. I, but, I didn't put too much stock into that line. It, or just know, it, it, it only it only sounded bad because you had been borderline flaming the players right before that. And the How thing is, like, like when you said Malk tries to TP out in front of a night soccer, like that was actually the right way to TP. You blow your TP, like you blow your your teleport skill so that he has to silence you. You blow your TP skills, so he has to nuke you, and then you can just teleport out when silence runs out. Like it's that wasn't a mistake either. But you're like, what is he doing? He's just wasting gold. No, no, no. The thing right. is, sorry, yeah, hold, 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 hold up. I want I want Toby to talk here um, because I do want to wrap this up in a reasonable amount of time. Toby. All right, I'm gonna say my piece on this one, clairvoyance. And man, like I know we've cast together. I know you know your shit. But, funnily enough, when it comes to a broadcast, it doesn't matter if you know your shit. It does not matter at all. You cannot flame on an English broadcast any player in any way, shape or form, unless you can pull it off as constructive, and this means very positively constructive, or if it's actually done in a joking fashion where no player can ever take offense to it. And I know Mal took offense. I saw his tweet come out. He took offense to what you said. You are not allowed to do that. If you want to do that, go cast in Russian. People will love you for it. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only way you can do it. An English yeah. broadcast lives under a different set of rules. And you as a commentator are never allowed to break the rules of offensive comments towards players. The only thing you're allowed to do as an analyst, and you are an analyst, is analyze the game and the reasoning for why things are happening. You, okay. it's, 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 not, it's not sugarcoating. It's not sugarcoating. Sugarcoating is something when you say, that was, that was a really good play, that was the best play ever, and, or maybe, maybe four stuff wasn't the best idea. Like, okay, that's a level of sugarcoating, but you're not freaking like drowning the shit. You've got, to, you've got to keep reality with what you say. You can't lie to the viewers, but you, under no circumstances, are allowed to insult directly players. This is something well, you cannot do. It doesn't matter if it's your phrasing or not, because really, people won't give a shit if it's just because that's the way you say stuff. That is not a valid excuse. It will I, never be a valid excuse. Okay. So All I, right, I hold on, Claire. That. Hold on, hold yeah. on. I, I, know, want, I, I, I want Sam to, to talk. Quick. I need I to hear Sam the tweet. I don't know um, what he tweeted, so just before Sam talks, I, could somebody just tell me what the tweet was, because I, I never got around to see it. Which tweet? Melks? Yeah. He said, he basically uh, called you out, a player that hasn't accomplished anything, why is he talking? Or something? That's basically well, it. Well, see, okay. All right, Sam, your turn. Cut in the pro scene. All right, we're going to go Sam, and then Claire, and then I'm going to take the last words, and then we're moving on. Okay. Claire, Claire Vince, I, I, know, I know you're my buddy, bro. And... Frankly, no. I'm not. I'm not one to, to, to care much about um, 
when at least you like if you see a pro game and then you see people playing badly it, it is it's 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 hard to say cuz in the situation of the team you don't know what's going on and you can't blame that one player when you, okay I'll, I'll put it in perspective when when i play when you play competitive dota and you're on a team and you're not an important hero like mag magnetar and and you're when you play this hero called uh, when you play this hero like mag you have a lot of pressure on you to do well with this hero and i'm sure everyone that's played this hero even in pubs you know like there's a lot of pressure on playing with your in house leagues or whatever the hell okay, I'm, I'm going long but and, and like when casters say oh, this mag screwed up like there's a lot of factors like when i what if 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 you're playing mag or you're playing this initiating hero or you're playing this really important hero and you screw up there's there's factors in this like you can't account for it. it's not just always the player's fault it, there's like if someone is forcing you to make an initiation that you don't like if someone is forcing you to do something that you don't wish for and then you disagree with it inside and then you make it it's you can't the thing about casters is that they should never be able to say something like they know what the team is doing they should they should say their analysis just say an opinion they can say a team is playing badly but I do agree with you there should be a limitation on how much you can call someone a specific player out and that's one thing I see a lot from casters it's quite annoying that they will say something and they don't know the full situation and I know I made like a team liquid post about this a while ago back, but they don't know the full situation they don't know they don't know they basically know the full like they see what they see they can't make this big illusion I remember a while back I, I think um, it was like I was like puck off lane and versus a co-op and this co-op got a double damage rune. He had like a DD, he got pulled and all this shit. And then I lost my region at the river. And then I saw one of the VODs. I think it was, um, I think AC was casting it. And then he just said like, oh, Bobo is getting raped. But it's like, it's, un it's really annoying when you see these like, when you, when you see this, this happen. And that just at least my opinion. It's, it's, I, right. I feel casters can't focus on one player. It should, it should be like, well, it's it's hard to say, call out one person. <clears throat> one thing about what Boba said, Aaron, first. Yeah. That could be sure. Yep. Like, AC saying that you got wrecked in the lane, that's actually a accurate depiction of the situation. But I think Clairvoyance, you're like, you have really good analysis, actually. Like, you really do. It's just that, you, like, your job when AC were to say, like, oh, Pat, Pat got destroyed in lane, would be like, hey, here's why it happened, and stuff like that. And you could do a really good job doing that. Like, no one here thinks that you're a bad commentator or a caster or anything. It's just that sometimes your delivery is a bit lacking. It's abrasive. Opinion. I can, no, Kurt, you're absolutely right. It's, I can dig it. You're right. It's, it is abrasive. But the thing is, I come to the point where I realize that, you know, honestly, it doesn't suit everybody's style. As a matter of fact, some people might actually be so divided that it's disgusting for some people, whereas some people just love it because they love hearing flame and that kind of stuff. But I'm here to honestly say this. Two things. One, Sam, the, these whole factors that you were just mentioning, I was the one who actually told you about this, how I understand when you blink in with Batrider, you, uh, you see two BKBs getting popped up and your team's not going in. Yeah, you're pressured. It's going to look bad on the Batrider, but not everybody's going to care for that. I mean, I didn't blame your bad on the cast, for example, but I, well, I, mean, I will still say, if I don't think it's the right decision, I will still say it. Maybe I was too heavy and abrasive with the comments. That's great. But um, actually, I need to go... Um, check out what's going on with the picture but never mind so moving on secondly it's it really is incredibly difficult to cover every single thing in the cast which is why i still feel like if i want to go to ti3 i really want to go ti3 as a panel guy i feel like my style is just more suited to have that kind of an audience where uh, where i could just talk for whatever i want people can but, agree or not but at the same time i gotta say i mean you say what I say is not accurate and the delivery is the problem. But at the end of the day, how many people have you ever dealt with that deliver the way I do? Like, how many people will you see that'll just say, um, yeah, that was kind of a, just a mistake there. What he should have done is this. Versus, like, I've seen so many games at this point where I say, you know, if you whip three Chronospheres in a game and you hit your mid lane solo twice in the process, you should not be winning your game. Like, I don't know how these teams, these players, all of these games, I don't know how these guys are supposed to win international this way. It's actually so frustrating to see it. And yes, I know the, peop the player commentator comparison is being made. And Melk, if you're listening to this, I apologize to you. I didn't mean to offend. I straight up just said I th you wasted gold by TPing because while your process was right, your health bar was low enough so you should have realized that you were dead. It's great that you were making the attempt, but at the end of the day, in hindsight, it is just a waste. 
so that's just me being like speaking reality and is how I see it. It's not me trying to specifically flame targets. If I say you miss chronospheres, it's not me flaming you for missing chronospheres. It's saying you miss chronospheres and therefore right. you're not you shouldn't have won. And it's just right. at the end of the day, I know you won't cut me off. It was just how the result was. Aaron, I do want to thank you for coming on the show. I've never really talked to you before. Um, so thank you. And um, I just wanted to clarify that I, you know, that one comment might have been a little harsh, but I do think that you have some really good analysis. I see a ton of potential. I just, uh, I wish you would present yourself in a little bit of a different way. Um, but you certainly have some fanboys now. You might have some haters as well. Uh, but I think I think we all would like to see you cast again. Um, but that doesn't when mean, it's all said that, and done, that doesn't mean that you're perfect. <laughs> Yep, it, all, it absolutely doesn't. As a matter of fact, when it's all said and done, thanks for having me here, even though, yep. uh, once again, intruding. All right, thank you. Now, if we can That's kick the... him out of the call, we can get our overlay back. Um, and we're going to move right on here. G1 League resumes, and it is the same exact teams as the We Play playoffs which is a pure coincidence, and the brackets are not the same, but the same teams. Um, EG replaced AL after losing to them, so we're going to have an EG versus a versus Liquid rematch. Sorry. Um, Bulba, are you ready for that one? Yes. Yes. Are you confident? I'm confident. So All right. If, I'm going to... If we... If we don't, uh, if we don't play as badly as we did yesterday, I think we should do well. I'm going to throw up a little poll in the chat here for the viewers um, regarding EG's recent performances. Will EG be invited to TI3? That is the question. Um, you can vote in the chat. The link is there, and we'll show that on the stream in a little bit once we get some more answers in. Kurt needs to leave, so we're going to hurry up and wrap this up. Um, you guys want to go to Shots Fired? Well, there hasn't been enough Shots Fired already tonight, man. You know what? There has, but I know that Charlie was saving one. Yeah, I don't know. It just feels so weak compared to everything else. <laughs> everything else already. It's just like... <laughs> Shit. What am I going to say after all of that? Yeah, this is going to be pretty underwhelming. I know, it really is. Shots fired at Kawa for wearing that, like, <laughs> poncho bag thing on the first day of EMS. We all, that, we all told him. That's what you go told on, man? <laughs> Fuck, man. I didn't expect, like, a... Sam to add clairvoyance all of a sudden. Ah, all I can say is I just want to see the world burn, buddy. <laughs> One fiend that. Christ, but I mean, shit. After that, what else do I got? I got fucking that joint Dota thing where who makes the best couple and. Come on, are you, are you not gonna say that was at least entertaining? What? Yeah, I don't. What was the clairvoyance? Very entertaining. It's very entertaining. Yeah, very entertaining. That... I'm not saying it's not. Yeah, I'm are just you asking. Not entertained? Are, yes. Are you not entertained? We're Spartacus. all incredibly entertained, but that's not Spartacus. Whatever. Oh, that was that was Gladiator, man. Whatever, man. I'm I'm too much Spartacus right now. <laughs> Do you not know a flying foam when you see one? Forgiveness, forgiveness. My hand all is right. busy. I'm gonna intro Sam's <laughs> shot fired here. So oh, last week, Christ, this is not a good episode for me. Last so. week, we ended this show. And then those of you who stuck around for around 30 seconds after got to hear a little sound clip that Sam begged me not to play, and I agreed I wouldn't play it. So I guess, first of all, apologies to Sam for being an asshole, but um, I had to do it. It was entertaining. Um, and so this week, Sam gets Charlie back a little bit. I don't know why he didn't go for me. But Sam played. I don't a know little... if he really gets me back. It's he played like, a prank okay. on you, and it's entertaining enough that we're gonna play it, and people are gonna enjoy it. All right, 
All right, so Ma, right. you can go ahead and play it now. We'll all shut up. Hello? Yeah, hey. Hey. So you the one who hit my car? I think you dialed the wrong number. Well, you left your phone number on my windshield. Yeah, um, I'm... Listen, B, you scratched my fender and busted out my taillight. Are you, yes, you, are you did. in California? I'm not even in California. Who's your insurance you company, B? Dude, I think you dialed the wrong number. Yo, don't lie to me. I ain't lying to you, bro. I think you then why'd the wrong you number. leave a damn note? It could have. I don't fucking know what you're talking about. It could have been anybody leaving I'm any random my number. Patience. Okay, I'm sorry. Man, what's I wrong with you? Number. I hope this doesn't become a thing. Like, I don't want to pick up my phone and this has become just a always, thing. always be scared. Did. Look what that you fucking we're did. We're getting pranked. This, this, this is going to become a fucking thing. Sam tried it on IX Mike too, but he just hung up right away. IX Mike hung up, dude. He was sleeping, dude. He got pissed. He said, What the hell? <laughs> it's all right, though, Charlie. I think it would have yeah, gotten I'm, most of us. I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not gonna threaten to. Oh, never mind. All right. Um, Toby, do you want to fire any shots? You don't have to, but I I have no shots to fire, man. I'm a peaceful, loving caster. Yeah, and you fired them all via text version on Reddit today. Exactly. Exactly. I'm basically out of ammo tonight. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's wrap this up. Um, shout outs from Toby. Any shout outs? Uh, shout out now that Owie 2000 is gone. Um, I'm going to give a personal shout out to Megumi, who's currently tuning in. Um, may she forever leave Owie for me. Uh, and also, hi to everyone who follows me on Toby One Dota on Twitter. I give you the best gossip possible, but really, Neo Dota, I can't compete. <laughs> All right, uh, Bulba, any shout outs? Uh, shout out to my team, my sponsors. <laughs> List them all, Bulba. List them shout all. Out. Shout out to Monolin Dota. Sorry. And Bar Barracuda and uh, Razor and the Little Laugh Factory. Twitch. Right. Charlie. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Fucking Frankie said that Sam got him with that shit, too. <laughs> did he? How many no, people did you do it to, Sam? I just did it to like two people. Uh, dude, dude, you, you don't understand. When I'm at the library and I'm, I'm studying for an exam, dude, I, I had like nothing else to do. I was, I was just whatever. Someone did that to me like yesterday, so I just I, I saw the website and then I did it to Charlie. Jesus Christ, you're such a clown. Charlie, shoutouts. All right. Get those Dignitas well. sponsors. Since since Kurt's gone, I'll I'll do it for him too. Shout out to Alienware, Be Quiet, Mad Cats, Intel, Kingston HyperX, QPad, Twitch TV, Multiplay, Western Digital, Creative Labs, uh, Scan, Iyama, and to the t to the team of course, Team Dignitas. They've they've done a lot for us. And uh, shout out to Frankie. All right, I'll give a shout out to Mott for producing this. Shout out to the viewers and everyone who just enjoyed that prank. For the people who said it's not even funny, I don't know what to tell you. I thought that was funny. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Sam is such a prankster. We'll be, yeah. we'll be back next week, as always, Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. That is 2 a.m. CEST for you Europeans. Um, VODs and audio, MP3, podcasts, everything like that will be uploaded tonight or tomorrow morning, maybe. Um, and you can follow us at NeoDota2 on Twitter. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week.